what I always tell my clients too is like, don't market or advertise to yourself, right? Because a lot of times it's like what I feel, right? And what I think. But at the end of the day, you know, it's really what the customers are going to think and, and see. Welcome to the Lead In Podcast where we dive deep into genuine stories of leaders who've seized control of their journey. This podcast is brought to you by Lead Hub, your growth partner for the trades. And now, I'm going to kick it over to our guy, Austin Lenny. We got him again. We got him again. Dennis, Vibe City. Back. So so the Rockets were Clutch City. What, what's San Antonio called? What's the Spurs called? Um, Championship well, City. Championship City. Championship City or the Countdown City because it's 210 is the area code. Uh, Military City, USA is another one. But Championship City is is pretty fitting considering the amount of, of uh, championships. Yes, there. So, we're all aware. Yes, we all know. But um, I originally I originally hail from H-Town. And actually the shirt I'm wearing today, my buddy designed. Um, and it's, it's for a local barbecue place here in San Antonio. But in 94, 95, this is the kind of design oh, the Rockets shirt had. There was no... So, there was no, there was no better team when Eddie Johnson hit that three, baby. I mean, I, came, dude, I, came, I remember where I was. I think I was at a baseball game. Okay. Like a, I was playing in a baseball game. We were all watching it from our, like, we were all watching yeah. it like the thing, you know. Yeah. Like I still remember, like, uh, you know, it's just it's the truth. So that being said, I say all that to say, you know, what branding marketing logo vision creation yeah. of a business is such a sensitive topic if if i could if i could think about all the different areas where people get upset yeah. um i don't think there's a more hot button topic it's not you yeah. know ppc it's not you know it's people like really hold like yeah. their name especially more importantly especially if it's your name yeah, you know, 100%. you 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 want for me. I have a loose affiliation with everything, you know, because it's whatever, right? But then you yeah. hear origin stories of companies, and you're like, yeah. "How did you come up with it?" And yeah. and like they, you know, the Apple story and this thing, and and so like people really do. Somebody said something to me the other day that until they said it to me, this was uh, about a year, two years ago. Um, I didn't believe them. I didn't. <laughs> they said the phone number on your vans don't matter, and I went. Oh, hold on. What now? What are, you, what are you talking about? And they said, have you ever seen somebody driving down the road and getting out their pen and paper and writing down the phone number on a van? No, maybe if the van stopped, but they're not driving. And so they're, they're more going to see your name. Yeah. And, they're more, and then they're going to Google it, right? And so that, yeah. you know, that really changes the way that we think about everything. So like yeah. our, our billboards really to, to make money are they to create a brand awareness in the community right this is why this is an onion that has about nine different flavors and so that's what i want to talk about today is the different moods the different kind of how you should look at this you know all that kind of stuff because it's a it's an interesting game so you're breaking up there a little bit but no, no. um so in terms of just branding in general you know so the biggest thing with like branding um, period is like it is very subjective and it's not objective, meaning like you like blue, <laughs> I like purple, you know, they like green. Right. And so, you know, what is too big? What is too small? Like everybody has their own perspective and it's shaped by different ways. Right. And so that's what makes like the creative process difficult is because everyone's kind of got their own vision and it's not. Uh, very objective. Like when you're talking about uh, analytics for like pay per click or something, cost per acquisition is cost per acquisition. It's pretty black and white. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and there are certain, you know, um, best practices for everything. But if people can't get aligned on those either, then it makes it even more challenging. So that's the biggest thing with like creative, right? And at some point you got to trust kind of the experts, you know, um, and just say, okay, like 
I'm going to trust in this process. Um, and talking about like brand awareness and just brand story, you know, to your point about a billboard, you know, the purpose of like a billboard or any like, you know, kind of mass media is to build top of mind awareness. For instance, like with Deets, you know, you don't know you need a, um, you know, an HVAC tech or services until you need it. Right. Because it's very rare that you, you know, like, okay, I know this is about to go out and I'm going to get it fixed. Most of the time I would say it's a demand service. So crap, I turned, I turned on my AC for the first time this summer and it's not working. Right. And so now I need to find somebody and call them. So one of two things are going to happen. They're going to recall your brand and say, oh, I remember Deets because I saw them on my Facebook the other day, or I saw a billboard driving down, you know, on my way to work, right? And then they're going to proceed to search you on Google and then typically call you or visit your site and fill out some sort of contact form. Um, or what they're going to do is they're going to Google you or they're going to Google HVAC service and click on the first person they see. Right. And that is because they have no brand loyalty, nothing like that. Right. And that's what makes these other brands, you know, so powerful. And as you know, like we work specifically in the trades and within home service. And the most successful clients we have are the ones that value brand awareness and that more top of the funnel messaging. Right. The hard part about that is like you can't see a one to one like direct return. And a lot of that time, it's like the long game. You know, it takes a while because you need reach and you need frequency and you need to build up that name. But I've seen it time and time again. You know, you stick with that plan for a year and then you start seeing the benefits of that because your branded search starts going up. You know, you just start getting more business, which then affects like those lower funnel tactics, because now it's cheaper for your cost per clicks. Right. Because they're searching your brand name. And those sort of things. And so, you know, and then thinking about like the creative design and like what is going to make people recall your brand the best, you know, and people want to have like tracking numbers and URLs and, you know, it just doesn't work like that anymore because we have the Internet like in our hand. Back in the day, you know, when you couldn't Google search something, you'd have to write the phone number down or you'd have to remember the website so you can go back to that exact place the next time. Now, you know, you don't even need a phone number or a URL on a billboard. You just need your logo, loud and proud, your business name, and some sort of positioning line that's going to make you memorable, right? So in your case, you guys have nobody beats deets, right? And imagine just continuing to hammer that in, hammer that in. Um, so people know, and that becomes synonymous, you know, with you. Um, and so it's super important to understand the balance of that. Um, because you can fight with lower funnel tactics all day in terms of search and cost per lead platforms, but specifically like in the home service space, private equity is coming in and they are just dominating with marketing budgets. Right. Um, you know, and then you just look at other like super competitive verticals, like personal injury is another one, man. Like, you know, every market you go in, you're going to see four or five different PI attorneys, you know, uh, advertising right um car dealerships you know is another big one and so um you got to really you know when you're when you're thinking about creative um you know you got to think about how am i going to put that message out in more like mass media um efforts um so you can build like a loyal audience how do you build a brand story around that and understand who you want your customers you know to be you know there's a reason gucci is gucci and they advertise how they want like they probably don't want somebody like me buying you know their stuff i'm not really their target market but there's people out there who you know all they want is fine luxury items right i'm cool with like a t-shirt my buddy designed like i don't need you know something that's gucci but there's other people out there that do right and so um yeah so just to you know circle back creative is just so subjective and it's and it's tough a lot of times to come to an agreement on something because we all have different visions of what beauty is, right? That's why we all have different types and, and all that. So it's important to, to remember that. But when you do get a solid brand, you got to focus on trying to um, get as much brand recall and top of mind awareness as possible.
because you will see the fruits of that labor over time. And the best brands in the world have done it. Nike wasn't always Nike. Coca-Cola wasn't always Coca-Cola, you know? Um, and it's easy to use those as examples because they're monsters now. But at one point in time, you know, Adidas was the boss, right? And Reebok was better. Um, but, you know, what is Nike's tagline? Just do, Just do it, right? And everybody knows that now. Uh, but they've spent years building that brand equity. And the sooner you start, the you know faster you'll get there. Do you think that, and this is just a layered question, do you think people, and it's different if you bought an existing company or you're starting a company, do you think people think too much in the short term and they don't think about what their business might be like in five to 10 years? Because if it were me, I would want to grow into the brand, not yeah. have the brand and then try to rebuild it every five years. Do you talk about that with your customers? Is that something that's talked about? Yeah, and I think my philosophy is we need to make the leap and start as fast as possible. Because if you try to slow roll it, like it's just going to prolong like the process, right? And um, what I always tell my clients too is like don't market or advertise to yourself, right? Because a lot of times it's like what I feel, right, and what I think. But at the end of the day, you know, it's really what the customers are going to think and, and see. And so if we're going to commit to do something, let's go all out. Let's get a real strategy in place. So, you know, behind the scenes, we're creating this new brand and this new, you know, logo and this new uh, brand story. And then we have like uh, a marketing plan that's going to support that rollout. And then how do we deliver that message internally from a cultural perspective so we get buy-in from everybody? And then at that point, we pick a launch date and we say, this is the date we're going and everything's rolling out. Now, that's a perfect world scenario. I understand like budget, you know, come into play. And so, you know, if you have a fleet of 30 trucks and vans, it might be hard to, you know, bite off a $120,000 expense to get all 30 wrapped at once. I get that, right? Mm -hmm. um, but there are other things where you're already like spending money on different marketing efforts that you can surely roll that brand out. Um, and so that's the other approach you can take is with within, you know, uh, a good timeline is like, how do you phase it out? You know, so phase one, we're revamping all of our uniforms, all of our, um, you know, marketing assets, anything that we're, you know, public facing with media dollars, we're going to update all that. But our vans and stuff like that'll come, right? Mm -hmm. Because we just can't, you know, have that major expense, you know, just yet. But the tricky part about that is when you're in between those phases, you could create, you, you could create consumer confusion, right? Cause now you have this old new, like awesome, badass brand, but then they're still seeing like some things that aren't like up to date, you know? Um, and I worked with like a local pizza chain, um, here in Texas and we had all this beautiful branding, like on the site and all our marketing materials, but their stores were still like outdated. And so, you know, you'd see all this stuff online and you pull up to the store and you're like, wait a minute, like, am I at the right place kind of thing? Um, and so it created a little bit of confusion. And so we had to find ways to, you know, mitigate that a little bit um, and figure out how can we introduce certain parts of the brand so they know there's like a connection there. Would you say that the number one misstep for business owners is creating a plan and not sticking to it? Um, I would say, yes, I think, um, and also just fear of creating that plan, right? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people can't even get to that step because when you create a plan, then like that's where real commitment starts coming in because then you're getting people's time involved and everybody is like working towards this plan. And then expectations start to build across different folks who are part of the plan. Right. And then so if you try to like go against that, you know, plan now, it's like, well, crap, we had this plan and now we're not going to follow it. And we've spent all this time. And so I think it's, you know, the fear of just creating a plan a lot of the times, you know, and willing to trust the process like, OK, this is this is going to work, you know, and our challenge is like marketers 
is like, how do I get the business owner to understand like, Hey, we've done this before. Right. And I know exactly like how you're feeling about this stuff. Mm -hmm. But if you trust in us, like we're going to make sure that everything rolls out smoothly and that we're going to position ourselves in the best way, you know, possible. Um, and it's not always mm -hmm. easy because some people get stuck in their ways and they're like, no, nope, like I know exactly what, what's about to, to happen. And it's like, well, how many times have you been through this? And a lot of times the answer is like, I've never done it. Exactly. I've done this 50 times, right? I've, I've felt, you know, this from folks before many, many times before. So just trust in the process and, you know, we'll, we'll get this thing going. So it's, it's always a challenge, man, because the other thing too, is like, you got to think about all like the sweat equity and things that have gone into the existing brand. Mm -hmm. Right. And now you're just like leaving that behind for this whole new thing. Right. And then mm -hmm. you have concerns about, well, you know, what are people going to think about the new brand? Right. What if they hate it? What if, you know, and the reality is, is like, I hate to say it, but a lot of times people don't really care that much, you know, with the brands that we're kind of working with, you know, like Subway, Nike, they change their logos, people flip out. Right. And I think mm -hmm. it's more so just like people want to use it as like a, a talking point, but that cycle is short, man. It's like a week people are like complaining and talking crap about it. And then next week it's like on to the next thing, you know what I mean? And so um, the rebrands I've been part of, you know, it's been rare where we've gotten like negative feedback on stuff. Um, for the most part, it's always well received. But a lot of times people don't even notice or care. They're just like, fix my stuff, man. Like, I don't care that you got a, a fancy new shirt or whatever, yeah. you know? Um, what people do care about more though, as opposed to like visual is like, what does the brand represent from a people perspective? And like, what is the culture that that brand is like mm -hmm. bred? And that is what is like more important. If you can keep the core essence of like what the business was built on and what it's about, like how it looks is not that important. It's really about how am I being treated like as a, as a customer, uh, mm -hmm. or a client. so. Well, it's so funny that you say that. So we have a guy that's starting Monday who needed some work done in his house. He's yeah. going to be our new trainer. He had our electricians come over today to do an appointment and an estimate. They didn't yeah. know he's coming to work for us in two days. Yeah. Because I, I wanted him to fully experience the business, you know, without any influence, right? Yeah. And he, you know, it was just, it was awesome to hear feedback from a customer that wasn't me. And yeah. he actually experienced it. He's a homeowner. Like, it was really cool. He loved the the text thing with the photo of the tech. He thought that was the coolest yeah. thing in the world, you know? Yeah. And then he said they were very professional and they were, you know, all the things. So it's like, that's what you're talking about. It's like yeah. people care about, like, how you make them feel when you're in their home. You know, as long as you don't have some vulgar stuff on your van, it yeah. doesn't really matter. <laughs> Exactly. It's about, it's more about like how you make people feel, you know, than anything. And, mm -hmm. you know, the visual representation is part of that, but it's more about what your true actions are as a company. Yeah, a thousand percent. No. Yeah. All right. What do you want to leave the people with when they're digging into vision or branding of their company? What do you want to leave them with before we head out of here? Uh, I would say, you know, be thorough in your pursuit of what you want to convey to people and don't overcomplicate it, you know, keep it simple, you know, focus on one or two core things that you want to really, um, convey with your new identity visually with your new, uh, messaging overall. Um, and really understand, you know, the why behind it, you know, why am I truly wanting to do this? You know, if you just want a new logo because you're tired of the other one, like, okay, like, you know, that's, that's fine, you know, but if you're really going to truly like try to invest and create a brand story and, and all that, like take your time and care with it and then really lean on the experts who've done it before, right? Like I wouldn't call you over to my house to replace my AC unit and say, actually, like, maybe you should be using like a like a different Phillips screwdriver for it. Right. Or is that the right way yeah. to like put that back on, you know? And like, mm -hmm. and so we get in that mode um, and it's, it's a natural thing, right? Because we're trying to like protect it and 
Um, but you got to be willing just to say, you know what, I'm hiring an expert to do this and I'm going to trust in, in the, in the vision. Um, and you might not always agree with some things, but at the end of the day, you have to have some trust that it's going to, you hired this person for a reason. So. thousand percent. And yeah. my advice to you would be less is more and yeah. make it, make it clear. Make me oh, make, make sure. people like they could see it. Like, boom. Yeah. One yeah. second. So we'll hope we got some value from this guy. Send it around to your friends and we'll see yeah. you next time. Yeah. Folks, if you made it to the end of the episode, I'm sure you found some value with what you're listening to. If you could send this to a friend, rate us and review us, share us around. The more that you share us, the more that we can share content with you. Thank you all so much for your time and listening. And we'll see you next time.